Hello everyone, welcome aboard the SV Californica. Uh, Jack and I sailed up uh, from our home port in Dana Point to Newport Beach, where we're currently tied off at a guest slip at Marina Park. If you want to see the passage video from that, uh, we'll put a card at the end, but you can also see it on the channel. Today, Jack is going to have to stay on board. He's, he's a good lazy bulldog, so he'll be fine with that. And I am going to take my bike over to the Upper Newport Bay, also known as the Back Bay, uh, where I grew up as a kid building forts and everything. So it'll be fun to come back with an educated eye. But um, this is a prime example of a salt marsh habitat. And salt marshes are where the, the land meets the sea and you have a lot of salt water from the ocean meeting with a lot of the fresh water there. But it's very important uh, wetland habitat for, um, for migratory birds. And, and all the plants and animals that we're gonna find there. So for our target species today, we're gonna look for pickleweeds, which there are two different species of salicornia, and we're gonna try to see if we can find both. Um, and then we're also trying to find a rare salt marsh bird's beak. Um, it is federally protected, and it occurs there only in uh, a few uh, salt marsh habitat so we'll see if we can find that there are freshwater marshes that lead into the salt water salt marsh habitat as well uh, we saw an example of that last week when we went uh, to trestles but here I'm going to try to find what's called rubus or sinus also known as a wild blackberry um, in that type of freshwater uh, habitat so for our bird species, we're going to try to find the great blue heron, which we didn't find at Trestles, uh, but we're pretty sure we'll, we could find it here um, in this saltwater marsh. Uh, then we're going to try to find an offspray. So there is a offspray nest on a pole that uh, was put up by the, the Back Bay Science Center. And so we can't actually go to the center, but I think we, from, there, from around that area we could hopefully see uh, an off spray at that nest or at least around the, the salt marsh. Uh, then we're going to also try to find um, a really cool bird this time of year in the summer which is a black skimmer. And this is a really cool bird that kind of skims along the, 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 the water and, and picking up food and things like that. So Jack's going to have to go down below and uh, I'm going to tie off my bike and head over to the back bay. All right, so right now I'm riding my bike down the Balboa Peninsula, where we'll get to the Balboa Ferry that'll take us from the peninsula over to Balboa Island. From there, we'll hop on over to the Back Bay. All right, so here we are at a uh, at the Back Bay Science Center. It is a salt marsh habitat that we've just entered into. So, all these plants you can see going pretty far out um, into the Back Bay have to deal with fluctuating tides of the salt water mixing with a lot of the uh, fresh water runoff, creating this brackish water. And so, all this water is connected to the ocean, and so. The plants here have to adapt to high levels of salt, and so these plants are called halophytes or halophytes, uh, which means halo, meaning salt, and phyte, meaning lover. So these plants are all salt-loving plants. They've adapted and tolerate that high level of salinity and uh, fluctuating levels of salinity as well. So as the tides from the ocean rise and fall, uh, so do they do so do the does the water here in the back bay um, in these salt marsh areas so you actually will have different habitat and just a little slight increase within inches or so even feet of the um, the salt marsh themselves so you'll have uh, these mud flats or actual inundated water areas uh, that will then with the tide go to mud and then from there you'll see this uh, low um, uh, the low marsh area all the way to middle up to high and within these different levels 
uh, with a slight rise in elevation, you'll have different habitat where the plants themselves will adapt. And that's typically due to a few things, but um, one is that different level of salinity uh, within, within the, the marsh themselves. So right behind me, we see the platform built for the osprey nest by the Back Bay Science Center. Uh, there's no uh, birds in there right now. I think we're a little late that they probably have fledged and uh, I don't see uh, an osprey up there. So we may see it flying around, but we'll see if we can find that target species. Okay, so right away at the Back Bay Science Center, you see an example real close up here of different uh, tidal levels of the uh, salt marsh. So you see some water right there inundated with, uh, with the, the, the brackish salt water and then the plants all growing right out from them. So. Right away, we found one of our target species. This is the salt marsh uh, bird's beak, also known as Chloropyron maritimum. And it's an endangered species, threatened, it has protection uh, within the Endangered Species Act. And here it is, only a few locations left where it provides habitat for this plant. So this uh, real cool, real cool plant right here in, uh, in Newport Beach. Okay, as you go up the back bay a little bit, you'll see these uh, residential areas that have streams that come down, bringing fresh water, uh, creating these freshwater marshes. So you see a lot of the bulrush right here and uh, some willows all behind it that uh, prefer more uh, fresh water rather than the real high, high salinity levels. But all that then transitions down and, and empties out into the brackish areas here um, with the salt water creating what you see is the saltwater marsh. And so the plants quickly change to a lot of the pickleweed, our, um, our target species, and uh, down to then the, where the water actually is and uh, areas of mud flats as well. So we see a great heron back there right now. And you can distinguish that because of its yellow beak, uh, its black feet and legs, um, distinguishing characteristics against a um, uh, snowy egret which has uh, yellow feet and a uh, black bill so a, a way to identify them we saw a uh, snowy egret at the trestles in the last video um, so here's another similar looking bird and some uh, um, some tips on how to identify the two so all along the Pacific coast from Canada all the way down into Baja there's what's called the Pacific Flyway. And it's basically a highway for migratory birds. And so we see a couple of them right behind us here. These are Canadian geese. And so they're really, really large geese and they fly huge distances uh, throughout the year. So as, as it gets warmer into spring and into summer, they're gonna start um, migratory, migrating north to where they'll actually roost and, and, and breed up in the areas but as it gets cold and way too frigid then they'll move down into areas uh, down here in um, warmer climates but uh, just another example of why these salt marshes are so important in these riparian wetlands for these uh, birds to pick up resources all throughout their migra migration in that um, pacific flyway along the coast here Okay, so as you come up the higher tidal areas of the salt marsh, you're gonna find this really important halophyte in this community. This is Frankinia salina, or alkali heath. And it has these beautiful purple flowers on them, these blue-green uh, glaucus leaves on them. And um, it's a real important plant for a lot of pollinators around here. I've been seeing a lot of bees and moths on this plant uh, specifically. But real interesting right next to it, you see these mats of hair, these orange, like dead looking plant on top of it. It's actually a parasitic plant that uh, will actually cover and smother plants and compete for those uh, light resources. Um, so you may see different species of them throughout uh, different habitats, but here it is occurring in the salt marsh. So yeah, it's an interesting plant called daughter. So here I was going to talk about some of these salt plants and then all of a sudden two peregrine falcons just flew up on the, the coastal bluff right behind me. And they're still flying around and they look like they were competing for food or something like that but um, real cool. Peregrine falcons, uh, one of the birds here at the coastal marshes and uh, in these uh, wetland areas but uh, it's one of the fastest birds in the world. Uh, they can go up to I think around 200 miles an hour. but. They're just soaring around, picking off birds. You can hear other birds freaking out because they see them, but 
really, really cool. Peregrine Falcon. Okay, so right behind me, it's a little hard to get on camera, but one of our target species, the black skimmer. And so I was able to get it on film, but you'll see that it just cruises at, a, at an interesting pace, just skimming along the water, hence its name, uh, with its lower bill, or its lower beak, uh, scooping up and skimming the water and actually picking up fish and other food or whatever it finds is along its flight path. But really cool bird here at the salt marsh. And uh, again, a species that needs these hab this habitat to, um, to feed and, and, and to live. So another real dominant species you'll see around the salt marsh area is pickleweed. So this is Salicornia. And it's called pickleweed. It actually is an edible plant. You can eat it and it tastes like a salty kind of pickle-like flavor. It's a, like almost like a succulent. And, and um, you'll see there's two different species overlapping right here at the Newport Bay. So this larger leafed one here, this larger plant, this kind of more bluish color, blue-green, this is a Salicornia pacifica. And you, this one is a perennial. And I believe this other one is more of an annual, but um, this over here is a little bit smaller and quite quite a bit widespread throughout here that has more uh, green foliage to it is Salicornia bigelovii. So two different species of pickleweed. There's a few other species around, but these are the two you kind of see here at uh, the Newport Bay. So uh, another halophyte, a real dominant species here at uh, in the, at the salt marsh habitat. And uh, yeah, like I said, put your money where your mouth is. Tastes like a salty pickle. <laughs> so in the salt marsh, we have actually near the inlets of them, like you see right here behind me, is actually a mixture of salt water and fresh water. So as you come in a little bit, you'll actually find some fresh water marshes which is indicative with these, these cattails and bulrush and, um, and going up along the, the freshwater riparian streams. So we're going to go ahead and, and follow this trail and uh, see if we can find our next target species, the, the wild blackberry, Rubus ursinus. So here we go. Here we found a beautiful stand of our, one of our target species, the wild blackberry. This is Rubus ursinus. And you can see it has, it's almost like a viney sh uh, shrub, uh, pretty low growing, kind of growing in and around other plants. Uh, it kind of likes the shade so much, although it can handle a little bit of partial sun, uh, but it grows kind of like an under understory type plant. And it has leaves of three, so it could be mistaken and look real similar to poison oak. But one way to distinguish whether this is or isn't poison oak uh, Rubus won't turn reddish color like poison oak and it also has thorns so along the stem you'll see a lot of these small little thorns so be careful while you're um, in and around this plant but that's a way to distinguish whether or not it is in fact poison oak um, they have very similar niches very similar habitat types and uh, very very similar looks so um, that, those are some tips to be able to uh, distinguish between poison oak but Rubus or sinus, like, like the name implies, it is a, a, a wild blackberry. So uh, it does have a small little white flower. It's not flowering right now. I think we may have missed it. Uh, but then that flower will go to a blackberry fruit. And it, it is edible, so um, it's another one of those native edible plants. Um, but it's just growing beautifully here, uh, providing berries uh, for a lot of birds and other foraging animals. And, and the flower themselves will help for pollinators. So Rubus ursinus, the wild blackberry, uh, here in the riparian area of uh, the Back Bay. So here in the riparian area, it actually follows down the stream towards a uh, more freshwater marsh as it transitions into the saltwater marsh. And I can tell I'm transitioning into the freshwater marsh right now, just across from the Rubus that we saw. Uh, is the freshwater marsh and I can tell by the plant species that we see so right here next to me I have two different species of juncus or rushes and so right here this more broader leafed uh, juncus here is juncus ziphoides or iris leafed rush and then right next to it growing kind of in cohabitat with it 
is another Juncus species that's more needle-like and a little bit larger as well. This is called soft rush or Juncus effusus. And so both of these plants were real important plants for um, indigenous peoples that would use it for building material. In fact, some of these Juncus has actually been used for boat making as well, but a lot of it was used for twine. All right, right as we finish out our bike ride, found perched up on its nest is the uh, osprey. So one of our target species, the osprey is a marine uh, raptor, actually feeds on fish and, and things around uh, marinas and, and other places like that, especially up here in the upper Newport Bay. So great find. We found it on our clothes out here, but I want to thank you all for joining me today And I hope you enjoyed our our bike ride for around the Newport Bay um, I'm gonna go meet Jack and we're gonna go sail on home to Dana Point We had a great time here in Newport, but I want you all to like and subscribe to the channel and uh, leave me a comment Let me know how, how you think it's going if you guys have any suggestions um, And where you would like me to explore next so until next time Thank you.